Good morning, Triton family and community members. I'm here th this morning just to tell you a little bit about um, our recent NEASC accreditation visit and uh, NEASC accreditation report. So in terms of sharing some good news, uh, we recently received our continued status of accreditation through the New England Association of Schools and Colleges. Uh, that's something that we received this July. Um, it follows a, a several year process which we underwent as a school and community beginning during the 2018-2019 school year where we underwent a self-study. During the 2019-2020 school year, we underwent our collaborative conference. The collaborative conference had a small group of educators come to visit Triton High School to evaluate our programs and help us um, identify areas that we wanted to look at in our decennial visit. And then in the 2021-2022 school year in December, we had our decennial visit where they provided a comprehensive look at all of our programs and offerings, meeting with teachers, students, parents, and administrators um, to get a full sense and picture as to the offerings that we provide at Triton High School. One of the things that uh, the report really highlighted and that the committee um, truly spoke to was the quality of relationships that the students, faculty, and uh, administration have at Triton High School, which is uh, essential because as we know, um, all learning is relation relational uh, and students learn best from people that they have strong developed relationships with. They also really highlighted the work that our student support team has done and that our student services have done to provide all students with um, really strong supports throughout the school. Uh, we've got a really well-defined student support team um, that does a really nice job of tracking um, student, both student learning, student struggles, um, you know, across their four years at Triton High School and making sure that all students receive the supports that they um, need. One of the other things that the committee noted was that um, Triton High School for a school of our size has a really wide variety of course offerings. They were truly impressed with the number of elective courses that we were able to offer and also the variety of opportunities that students had available to them. Um, this is seen in our video production classes, our um, science course offerings, our English 11 and 12 offerings where students can pick topics that they're interested in, our new metalsmithing course, our American legal systems course. So they really highlighted uh, in the report some of the things that we've done um, to provide a wealth of opportunities to students. They also commended us for the work that we've done specifically in our world language department to move towards a more proficiency-based approach. This is something that um, has been a focus of the Department of Education and our, our department has really done a lot of work to ensure that we're moving in that direction and it's kind of required a wholesale change in how we teach world language. One of the other things that um, was highlighted in the report was all of the opportunities for extracurricular uh, activities that we have at Triton High School. And they specifically focused on those that were service related. Um, our community service club, our um, honor societies, our environmental club, um, all have a heavy component of service uh, involved. And I think that's something that's really kind of a hallmark of a Triton student experience is their ability to be involved in service related opportunities. They also kind of highlighted some of the opportunities that we've been putting in place for service-based learning and community-based learning. Whether that's come out in our environmental science courses working um, with the University of New Hampshire on beach dune restoration or in the development of our new internship program. We've seen a number of places where um, service-based learning and community-based learning has really increased. The last place that the committee really highlighted and that they commended us for was for implementing common planning time throughout our, our schedule. For our faculty, it makes a huge difference in their ability to collaborate with one another, to plan, and to make sure that they've uh, implemented the best possible curriculum for all of our students. This is where uh, many of their ideas get workshopped with their colleagues and where uh, we truly see growth coming from our teaching faculty. 
in terms of uh, the recommendations that the visiting team suggested, they really focused on having us leverage the relationships that we've built and developed with our students to start to increase academic expectations further. And with these increased expectations for our students, the um, central pieces that they listed that we, they wanted us to move towards uh, were really focused on having more student-centered learning opportunities. And so this will require our students to think a little bit differently about what's asked of them in the classroom setting as learning is more individualized and tailored to their specific needs also requiring them to take a greater ownership of the learning process. It also will require us to change how we instruct within our classroom settings. Additionally, they focused on having us continue to increase the amount of authentic learning opportunities that we're providing for students. The idea is that we're trying to continue to find opportunities for students um, to be involved in learning activities that allow for them to see the real world connections, the learning that's taking place. Lastly, the visiting team also uh, provided a recommendation around trying to make sure that we tighten some of our grading timelines and grading windows, wanting to make sure that students were getting and receiving feedback in a timely manner so that they were able to utilize the feedback that was being provided to them and make changes in their practice uh, in a timely and effective manner one of the most significant areas that they had as a recommendation. And it's actually the only place where we did not meet the NEASC accreditation standard was in our physical building. And that's something that uh, we're hoping through our continued work with the Massachusetts School Building Authority and also work with the community that we're hoping that we can address in the coming years. Thank you for taking the time this morning to watch this video. If you have additional questions, please look through the full report or feel free to reach out to me um, so I can help better explain where we are in the accreditation process, some of the wonderful work that's happening at Trayton High School, and the ways that we're looking to help all of our students succeed. Thank you so much.